What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to today's vlog. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about one of my favorite morphs in ball pythons. And I say this because when I got into ball pythons, I started buying snakes based on what I liked before I knew that this was gonna turn into a business and buying things that financially made better sense. So I bought a lot of things in the beginning, just like most people do. I bought them as pets and I just bought snakes that I liked that looked cool and didn't really think about put much thought into what I was buying and why I should be buying what I'm buying. One of the snakes, just like everybody out there, I think one of the most popular morphs is bananas. Banana ball pythons are one of the snakes that most people want to have because I think they're, they just look awesome. They're very pretty snakes. Um, they're bright. A lot of times people like the albino type snakes or the brighter colors. Uh, some people do like just dark morphs. They do like snakes that look almost more black. Um, so one of the first snakes that I had to have, it was like, you know, my top 10 when I first got snakes, I was like, I gotta get a banana ball python. So I ended up finding one. And with banana ball pythons, uh, they're one of the, I think the only snakes or one of the few that their morph plays a part on the sex of the snake. So I know I brought this up in other videos. If you have a male ball python that was born from a male father, so if the dad in the pairing was a banana and then one of the babies came out banana, he's gonna also make male banana ball pythons in the future. So to get female ball pythons, especially if you have males and you're breeding them to all your different females, they're all gonna be males when they come out. So it's tougher to get females. So the pricing on females is higher than it is on males. Um, with bananas. So typically females are more expensive as it is, just because a snake is a female, but now when you have a female banana, it increases the value. So the reason I talk about that is I bought a female banana as my first banana only because the seller bred snakes together, had a female banana, and I don't think realized the price difference. So he was selling a female banana for about the cost of a male banana, and so it was kind of almost impossible to turn it down. So. Uh, let me show you her. This was the first banana that I had purchased. This was the first one, so let me find her. And so not only was the price like too good to be true in a way, it's also more than a banana. It turned out that it was an Enchi banana. And again, at the time, I was still new to snakes also. I think this person may have been even newer than I was. Um, so I ended up getting a female Enchi banana for the cost of just a normal male banana ball python. So I got this, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago, and I bought this as a baby. So this was a tiny little hatchling right out of the egg when I bought it, and this is her now. So she's about 1,800 grams. She's not super big. She eats temperamentally, like she'll eat sometimes, she'll go on a couple months where she's eating well, sometimes she just refuses food, so she's not the best eater, um, but she eats when she needs to. Like when it's breeding season, she'll start pounding down food, which is good. But she is a beautiful snake. So what you're gonna see in bananas are these little black spots. And immediately what you're gonna see on Instagram or any social media platform is you're gonna see the people on Facebook, all of the uh, pet experts out there who are about 12 years old, are gonna say, look at that snake, it's covered in mites. And it's not, what happens is bananas get these freckles, these little black spots all over them, all right? So as they age, they start to get more and more black spots. Because this is an Enchi, and she cleans up the pattern quite a bit and it also tries to push and reduce all those black spots. So she is not covered as much as most bananas. Most bananas are gonna get a lot more black freckles all over them. She does not. You're also gonna notice that the freckles come in in the purple areas. So all the little black dots come in in the purple. You don't see any of the black dots in the yellows. See, it's always in the purple areas. So she was my first, she at the time, this was like my favorite snake when I got it because I was like, this is what I always wanted. I wanted a banana ball python or so beautiful as snakes. All right, so let me put her away. Now let me show you the second banana ball python that we ever got. In March 2018, Kristen and I went to Tinley, and for those that don't know, Tinley Park is uh, hosts twice a year uh, a large reptile expo. So we went there, and on Saturday evenings, they have a charity auction. Uh, one of the snakes in that auction was this guy, and Kristen actually bid on him and won him during the auction. So he was already about 500 grams and already about what we would say is the start of breeder size. So we ended up getting this guy. He's a super Enchi. So now he has like two doses of the Enchi of that last snake that we showed. So you're gonna notice there's even less black freckles. Like there's a couple that you can see in the camera there. 
There's some, so there's almost no black speckling. So it's a super Enchi. And that also means when I breed this guy, every baby's gonna be an Enchi because when you have two doses of Enchi, one of them will always get passed on. So super Enchi banana. And this was also het for clown. So it carries the clown gene inside of it. So when we got him again, I said he was about 500 grams. We ended up having a female that we had been pairing. She was a pastel het clown. And we were pairing her all season and there was no locks that we could ever see. Uh, and she kept eating and growing. And it looked like she was starting to grow follicles. And so right at the end, we had thrown him in with her and they had locked immediately. Uh, they were locked for about, I would wanna say for about two days straight. They unlocked and we separated them. And about like, I wanna say a week later, she ovulated. Um, so we knew that we were gonna get eggs, but we didn't know who the father would be, whether it was the one male that we kept putting with her or whether it was gonna be this guy. Um, and again, we didn't notice any locks with the previous male, but we did with this one. So when that clutch came, we cut those eggs open, they all hatched, and we ended up getting uh, all Enchis and all, uh, not all bananas, but we got a lot of bananas. So we knew that this was the father. So we got him and immediately he had fathered a clutch for us. So he only fathered one clutch so far last season, but he did, uh, he did his job. So this is banana number two. And now on to the rest of the bananas. All right, so that first banana that I showed you, that first female that we had gotten, we ended up breeding her this past season and we got a clutch of eggs from her as well. So we had two banana clutches that came this season. And so, like I said, she's a female banana and it's a sex related gene. That means that any, any of the bananas that we get that she hatches, so she's gonna hatch babies, Technically 50% of those eggs should be bananas. And of those 50 of those bananas that we do get, 50% of those should be females. So we ended up getting a couple uh, bananas out of that clutch. So I'm gonna show you the three that we kept as holdbacks. So a couple of them did sell, but we kept three for ourselves, two females and one male. And so again, in the beginning I said that males make males, unless that male comes from a female, then that's gonna be a female maker banana. So we kept one male, who eventually we will probably breed to a couple of females down the road. And then we kept two females that we're gonna raise up and they're gonna be future breeders. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so this is the first one that we got from that female. Our very first banana that we had gotten produced us babies, and these are the babies. This is a pastel banana. So this is just a banana, and it also carries the pastel gene. So you see how white, hopefully you can see on the sides, how white it is on the bottom here, and how the yellow is pretty much on the top only. So this is our female, so she's going to stay with us and we will breed her a couple years from now when she's bigger and ready to go. All right, so the next one we got is another female. So the pairing with that female, the dad of this clutch is a pewter blast, so it's a pastel cinnamon pinstripe. So the genes that are in this snake here is banana, pinstripe, so you can see that pattern, that's the pinstripe pattern. And then it also has Enchi as well. So Enchi cleans everything up, so it's a very reduced pinstripe. A lot of pinstripes have a lot more markings on the side. This is a lot less. So three genes in this female. She's gonna be a breeder for us in the future. This one is also very yellow in comparison to the other bananas. I don't know if that's the pinstripe, because this is the only one with pinstripe, and it's very, very yellow. And then the male that we decided to keep of the males, the other males have sold. Again, I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera. I'll do a little B-roll. This is obviously a banana again. And then it also carries the pinstripe gene. And then it also carries the cinnamon gene. So it's gonna be a little bit browner. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit darker in color. A little bit different than the other yellows. You're gonna see more of a purple like tint to it uh, than the other snakes. And so again, this is a male, so we're gonna keep him and breed him back to a couple other females. Okay, and so the final snake that I wanna show you is gonna be uh, a male banana, but this one came from the male that we bought at Tinley. So that second snake that I showed you that Kristen bought at the auction, this is gonna be a son to that male. So that was a male that produced a male. That means that this male that we have is gonna produce male babies. So when that snake breeds, 50% of his babies should carry the banana gene. And of those bananas, 99.9% .9 are gonna be male. So you're probably never gonna get a female out of him. So let me show you that one. All right, so this is him. He's a banana, and now he's also Enchi because his father was a super Enchi, so he carries the Enchi gene. And he's also a pastel. So his pattern gets super cleaned up. The pastel 
The pastel and Enchi work really well with clown and clean up the pattern quite a bit. So this by far is my favorite snake that we produced this year. This is the one I'm the most proud about. And so he's definitely gonna stay back with us and be a future breeder for all of our clown females. So we're gonna get him up to size, get him big enough to breed. And so that's it for my banana. So again, I wanted to just take a few minutes and show off the bananas I have in my collection, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, six bananas now. Uh, so the collection's starting to grow. We definitely held back more snakes this year than I thought we were going to, but uh, a lot of things hatched that I could really use in the future. So uh, I got a little bit greedy and I kept more things than I was kind of planning on. So, um, but I think what that means is in the future, a couple of the breeders that we have now that we're not gonna really be using anymore are gonna get replaced because I don't wanna just keep growing and growing and growing. I wanna kinda keep the number at a manageable number that I like. Um, so that probably means after the season, a couple of our breeders uh, might be uh, on the chopping block and end up for sale on Morph Market, but I'm not 100% sure yet, but I definitely think we're gonna thin the herd a little bit on our older snakes um, that are breeding for us this season. So if you're gonna be looking for snakes, I'll put the link to my Morph Market down below uh, so you guys can check that out. But if you're like me, if you like bananas, uh, when it comes to ball pythons, comment down below as to what your favorite banana combination is. If there's things in banana that you like, or if you just wanna comment down below and let me know which snake in this video you like the most, comment down below and let me know because uh, when it comes to bananas, that is definitely one of my favorite snakes to see um, in certain recessive things. Like I love bananas with clown. Um, I love it with pied, however, sometimes I hate when pied overtakes it too much, you get too much white and you really can't appreciate the banana in it. So when it comes to recessives with bananas, personally, I like banana in clown a lot more than I do in pied. Um, but that's just me. So again, let me know down below what you really like to see mixed with the banana snakes or like I said, let me know which one your favorite was in this video. Um, but again, I wanted to show this because I know a lot of you guys ask about banana ball pythons. So I wanted to make this quick video and show you all the banana ball pythons that I have. So again, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace out everybody.